I'm sorry for the delay. Maybe one technical announcement uh, due to the delay. Unfortunately, we might not have time for questions because HRVP has to catch the plane and he was supposed to leave about now. So he will just brief you on the, on the results of the discussions and then we will probably have to run. And we will be joined by the Czech Foreign Minister now, who will stay, of course. Good afternoon and welcome to this press conference after informal meeting of the EU foreign ministers chaired by High Representative Josep Borrell and hosted by Czech Foreign Minister Jan Lipowski. Both will inform you about the outcomes of the discussion, so I will hand over the word to High Representative. Please. During this uh, informal meeting yesterday and today, we have been exchanging views about the uh, an important number of aspects related with the Russian aggression against Ukraine, our support to Ukraine, and also our partnership with Africa. But let me start, let me start with, uh, with the main uh, issue, the, maybe the most concrete issue that we have been discussing, because since mid of July, we have seen a substantial increase on border crossing from Russia in the neighboring states. And uh, this has become a security risk for these uh, neighboring states. And in addition to that, we have seen many Russians traveling for laser and shopping as if no war was raging in Ukraine. Member state considered that uh, we are not business as usual. It cannot be just business as usual. We, I want to remember you that there are already bans for specific individuals supporting the Putin's regime. But we consider that more has to be done. And therefore, we agreed politically, this is not a legal text, but it's a political agreement, we agree that uh, some has to be done. And therefore, let me try to summarize in concrete terms what we politically agreed on. First, full suspension of the European Union-Russia visa facilitation agreement. Full suspension. Until now, it was partially suspended for special collectives, groups of people, officials, and entrepreneurs, and now is fully suspended. This will sig significant, it, will sig it means it will significantly reduce the number of new visas issued by the EU member states. It's going to be more difficult, it's going to be longer, the process, and consequently, the number of new visas will be substantially reduced. And this is a common approach, and a common approach will prevent a potential visa shopping by Russians going here and there trying to look for the better conditions. Second, there is a common understanding that this will allow for visas to be granted on an individual basis on a thorough statement of each individual case, and especially for specific groups of people. We don't want to cut ourselves from those Russians who are against the war in Ukraine. We don't want to cut ourselves 
of the Russian civil society. Third, we agreed that passports issued by the Russian authorities in occupied territories of Ukraine will not be recognized. Fourth, during the debate, which has been a, a long and constructive debate, some concerns has been raised about not the new visas, not the flow of new visas being granted, but about the stock, about the millions of existing visas. And there was a common understanding that uh, this also has to be addressed. And this situation needs also a common approach. And that's why we agreed to invite the Commission to look into this uh, complex situation and provide guidelines. Six, the situation in, in the bordering countries is becoming challenging, and we acknowledge that these countries can take measures at national level, at national level, to restrict entry into the European Union through their borders, always in conformity with the European Union Schengen Border Code. And finally, that this is a complex situation because we talk about the flow, talk about the stock of existing visas, we have to continue coordinating the implementation of this uh, common approach. We also change uh, on the wider context of the war in Ukraine. We agree that we have to be prepared to face the negative consequences of these uh, Russian aggressions against Ukraine that unhappily it seems that it's not going to end any time soon. We have said before many times, we want to repeat it, this war is not only about Russia and Ukraine. This war is about the security and the stability of the European continent as a whole. And more than that, it has a wider repercussion all around the world. We discuss about, uh, as for example, the catastrophic impact that this war could have if uh, Russia continues gambling around the Ukrainian nuclear power plants, especially in Saporizhia. We discuss about the political, military, economic, and humanitarian support to Ukraine, and we insisted that we remain united in our response to Russia's war at his malign global behavior. The ministers were informed about the debate on the defense ministers, and we agreed on accelerating work on the parameters for a European Union military assistance for Ukraine, in order to make the decision about that issue as soon as possible. We also agreed on accelerating the work on the sustainability of the European peace facility in order to be able to respond better to the evolving needs of the Ukrainian army. And then we discuss about Africa. This was a different issue, but uh, not so different because the war is affecting very much many African countries. Europe is the first trade investment, trade and development, the first partner on trade investment and development, on peace and security, and we have to coordinate our initiative in order to work with the African partners, because as I said, the war in Ukraine and the fact that Russia is using food and energy as a geopolitical weapons, interferes, interference and disinformation and activities of mercenary groups is a matter of concern. Finally, we had an informal lunch with the foreign ministers of Ukraine, the Republic of Moldova and Georgia, what we call the associated trio. We discussed the situation on the ground. We discussed about the partnership policy, which remains 
an important additional tool for all our Eastern partners to reinforce integration and cooperation with the European Union. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Minister. Mr. Party. Thank you. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm very glad that I was able to invite my EU counterparts to Prague. I'd like to thank all those who helped with the organization so that the event should be smoothly. This was an open construction discussion. We confirmed that we are united. We are united in our policy. We agreed that in relations with Russia, we can't continue. For some months now, the Czech Republic has been saying that we need to review our entire policy towards Russia. The High Representative, Josef Borrella, the main theme of this meeting was the debate on the Russian question and Russia. And great emphasis was placed on visas for Russian citizens and pressure placed on the border between Russia and Finland and the Baltic states, so Estonia, Latvia, Lithuania. We do not issue visas, tourist visas for Russia, including cruises between the 5th of February. I z běloruského útoku území zaútočilo na Ukrajinu na Ukrajinu a stále opakujeme a to budu říkat i zde že v době ruské nebo spíše Putinovy války, kdy jeho vojska zautočila na suverénního evropského souseda, nemůže, nemůžeme o, o turismu jako takovém hovořit. Je to pozice České republiky a já samozřejmě vnímám, že je zde celá řada otázek, která míří k tomu, jakým způsobem se k tomu zaujme Evropská unie a myslím, že jsme dneska dospěli k poměrně výraznému, výraznému pokroku. Můžeme to nazvat všichni prasným koncenzem, ale máme jasno v tom, že chceme plnou suspenzi výzové facilitační smlouvy. A tom existuje zhoda. A tato facilitační smlouva míří k tomu, že byla vydávána víza ve velmi zjednodušeném procesu. Neověřovaly se některé kroky. A tím pádem máme evropskou shodu na tom, že hrůkové přijdou o ty výhody, které plynuly z této facilitační smlouvy. A já bych chtěl říct, že ta facilitační smlouva Smlouva má určité politické předpoklady pro to, aby existovala. Ten politický předpoklad je, že chceme vést přátelské vztahy mezi Evropskou unii a Ruskou a rozhodně dnes taková to politická realita není. A já se vnímám jako první důležitý krok, který může a myslím si, že vlastně to je i ta druhá věc, na které jsme se byli schopni zhodnout, je, že nechceme, aby se dále komise a jestli by se dívali na tu otázku, když se hledali cestu, jak vyřešit ten praktický problém vlastních států, které potřebují nějakým způsobem bezpečnostních důvodů omezit pohyb svých studičů přes své hranice. A jak je říká vysoký představitel, máme i celou řadu konkrétních dalších doplňujících podmínek a okolností, které toto doprovází. Ohledně dalších otázek, tak já jsem velice rád, že dnes jsem také na obědu, který byl na okraji našeho neformálního hodnání, mohl si vítat tři ministry zahraničí zemí asociačního Tria, tedy Ukrajina, Moldavska a Gruzie. S nimi jsme se bavili o tom, co můžeme udělat pro to, abychom pomohli v jejich přibližování k Evropské unii a jak více pomoci Ukrajině v jejím boji proti ruské agresi. A já bych chtěl říct, že my jsme se přibli, že prostě neustoupíme, dokud, dokud Ukrajina neobhájí svoji územní celistvost a suverenitu této nesmyslné a neoporinitelné válce. Já jsem osobně na Gimnichu mluvil o imperialismu, mluvil jsem o také 
Evropské unie a Afriky a tam jsme si především zdůraznili, že musíme bojovat s ruskými propagandistickými narrativy a dezinformace, které vlastně Putin v tomto regionu šíří. Je to taková pelička, já jsem na jaře vydal článek o ruském neokolonialismu, tam vyšel v celé řadě v médiích Africe, tam jsem právě varoval před ruskými imperialistickými kouskami a apeloval jsem na to, aby africké země nezapomínaly na to, že za spolupráci s Ruskem platí vysokou cenu. Evropa přichází úplně s jiným přístupem a my někdy musíme trošku také zapracovat na tom, abychom se dokázali prodat. Máme výhodu v technologiích, máme výhodu v tom, že přinášíme udržitelné řešení. Chceme spolupracovat například na vědeckých projektech nebo o energetických záležitostech v tak, jak se bojuje proti globálnímu oteplování. A samozřejmě dneska je to celé spojeno i s určitým bojem minimálně za Česko, ale i za celou řadu dalších zemí v boji proti ruskému neokolonialismu, protože to je to, co potřebujeme na africkém kontinentu vysvětlovat a vystát na naší straně. A já vám děkuji za pozornost. Hezký den. To téma vízové problematiky, je slyšet ta jednota v tuhle chvíli pouze na té úrovni, kterou byste zmínili, to znamená na tom, že nebudou ta ruská víza zvýhodňována. A nebo cítíte tak, že je tam i jednota na tom, že se přitvrdí lidově řečeno? To znamená, že tam je jednota na tom, že se nějakým způsobem to vydávání víz skutečně zamezí, a nebo spíš některé státy, které by volili tu národní, to národní řešení. What did you say about national solutions? You know, the, the member states, according with our rules, have a wide possibility of regulating the process of visa delivering and border control. So uh, as far as they fulfill in accordance with the Schengen visa code, there is a wide range of possibilities for them. And according with the different situations, each member state, and that's what I said, we agreed that according with the situation, member states can take national measures. National measures on the process of delivery visas, national measures on the cross-boarding process, always in accordance with the, it could not be otherwise, in accordance with the Schengen Code. But they have a lot of possibilities, and each one will be able to implement them. Yes, we could have had the following. Je zde konkrétní problém těch severských států. Problematika vydávání a problematika jich vydaných víc protože existuje zhruba 12, 000, 12 milionů šengenských víz pro občany Ruské federace, je poměrně složitá a ne, neexistují jednoznačné a rychlé odpovědi, na který bychom se mohli politicky shodnout. Tak proto jsme došli poměrně k jasnému závěru, že vyzýváme instituce Evropskou komisi, aby se touto otázku dále zabývala a dopracovala návrh, který na všech stránkách, na všech úrovních i pracovních úrovních bude bude, bude odsouhlasen a já věřím, že dokážeme dojít k dalším opatřením, které budou vycházet vstříc severským státům a zároveň budou vnímat politický postoj některých jiných států, které prostě chtějí tam, řekněme, mít určité oblasti pokryté. Ale těch cest je několik a zároveň platí, že už dneska podle šengenského kodexu ty státy mohou přijímat určitá národní opatření tyto státy hovoří o regionálních opatřeních, protože to je konkrétní problém, který musí řešit. A já vnímám, že jsme, že jsme debat byla opravdu otevřená, že byla byla poměrně otevřeně. Zazněly názory ze všech stran. Na druhou stranu byli jsme schopni dojít k tomu, že se tomu chceme věnovat. A myslím si, že ty cesty tam jsou, jenom prostě ve složení ministrů zahraničních věcí není realistické, aby zazněla taková věta, která přesně bude definovat tu politiku, protože je tam několik cest. A to je teďka klíčové, bavíme se o složité právnické problémy. 
Uh, yeah, Rick and Jules, Jack Radio for Europe. Um, two, two questions, if I may, on separate topics. Uh, firstly, on, on the visa issues. Uh, going forward, what, what, what can potentially be the next step? Could you, for example, stop uh, multi-entry visas to Schengen? Or what is the next step in between visa facilitation cancellation and a full visa ban? And secondly, on a different topic, on Iran, on the JCPOA, you have now received the answers from uh, Iran and from the United States. Can you update us what the next step is now to reach a full agreement? Thank you. Yes, sure. You know, it's more than three weeks that I shared a draft text uh, as coordinator to the partners in order to conclude the Vienna talks. I got feedbacks from all delegations I got comments from Iran and the U.S., which uh, both I found reasonable. And it's, to me, it's clear that uh, there is a common ground, that uh, we have an, an agreement that takes into account, I think, everyone concerns, and that I am hoping that in the coming days, uh, we are not going to lose this momentum and we can, we can uh, close the deal, taking into account these uh, reasonable comments that both parts, Iran and U.S., has been presenting to my text. And uh, uh, the other question, you know, I have to repeat the same thing. The visa uh, facilita facilitation agreement facilitates this is cancelled. So no more facilitation. It's, 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 it's a, it's a, I'm not playing with the words, but it's a visa facilitation. It's done to facilitate. If it is finished, there is no more facilitation. So the visas will be more difficult to get. But it is still be possible to get visas, but in a much reduced number. This with respect to the new visas. With respect to the border control, the border crossing, certainly you need a visa. But a visa in certain circumstances may not be enough. And the member states have the possibility of controlling the border control, controlling the, so the border passing. And this is upon them according with their national competences in the framework of the Schengen Visa Code. So what's going to happen? It's going to happen that the process of delivering visas will be a different one, much restricted, and the process of border crossing will be, as always, under the control of the member state that can decide to take measures in order to face the challenging situation that they consider in the framework of the Schengen Code. Nothing more, nothing less. Okay, so this concludes the press conference. Thank you very much for coming. Sorry for the rush, and a big thanks to the Czech presidency. See you soon. Bye. Thank you very much. Thank you. 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 Thank